Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and I'm here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Flip, W4FLP. And Flip, welcome. Welcome to the uh, channel, and, and thanks for being an Augie. Uh, his question is this, Dave, I've purchased an SDR Play RSPDX, which is a little software-defined radio that looks a great deal like uh, this one right here. It's literally a black box. It's powered through the upper sideband. That one right there happens to be the RSP uh, 1A. Uh, the DX is one step up in there in quality. Uh, for example, it has a steel case instead of a plastic case. Okay, he's purchased an SDR Play RSPDX, which is a very broadband receiver and a nice one. It's designed specifically to be a software-defined receive-only set. It's not just a, a TV dongle or something like that. I mean, it's a real uh, receiver. Now, um, he says he's hunting for a great receive-only antenna. Ah, well, I, I hate to... Oh, first of all, let me tell you the range of this little doinky here. Goes from like 25 kilohertz, somewhere around there, audio frequencies, all the way up to 2 gigahertz microwave frequencies. It's extremely broadband, okay? And you can look at any 10 megahertz slice of that. Now that's really handy in HF because you can look at each band separately and get a full waterfall of the whole band. Or you can look at the 10 megahertz and in three slices get the entire HF, medium frequency, and low frequency almost all at once. Okay. Now, uh, when you get up into higher bands, like for example, FM broadcast in the United States is from about 89.5, no, it's less than that, 88, something like that, to 108 megahertz. You can, and, and you can receive lots of different modes on this thing. Uh, it comes with companion software for the PC. You can listen to Airband, you can listen to uh, your local sheriff, you can listen to just millions of different things. Now, ham radio, the popular bands, are um, on HF and VHF slash UHF. The two bands on VHF are 2 meters. There's also activity at 222 megahertz. Uh, that's the 1.25 centimeter band. And then the 70 centimeter band, uh, commonly called 440. Okay. Now, one antenna tends not to cover all that, with an exception I'm going to show you later. But if you um, get, there are available W6LVP, I think it is, and MFJ, both have receive-only loop antennas. These are untuned loops, about three feet in diameter, with a preamp, okay, right inside. And that's fed uh, by uh, using a bias T, which comes with the radio. I'd show it to you, but it's uh, screwed to the side of the case here. Um, and that 12 volts goes over the coax to power the preamp, and then the RF comes down to you and can go right straight in to the little SDR radio. So there's the MFJ antenna, there is the W6LVP loop, the MFJ loop, both are extremely broadband. By extremely broadband, I mean medium frequency through high frequency, and that's it, okay? And uh, those are kind of expensive. They're more, definitely more cost than the radio. Uh, and you can uh, mount them. They do tend to be a bit directional. Uh, MFJ doesn't necessarily recommend putting it on a, a rotor, but if you're really, really, really into this, you might want to put it on a rotor because it's got a null right down the middle. If you're looking through a ring like this, the null is in this direction, okay? So it tends to hear off the sides. I've often been asked, can you mount it horizontally so that your null is straight up and down and get everything? I've never actually tried that. Uh, there's 
nothing wrong with that. It probably should be unidirectional at that point. Now, um, for VHF, UHF, you can try something like a disc cone. Now, I believe the DX version of the SDR play, you can switch antennas. So you'd get something like a disc cone that you can put up there. Costs you about as much as the radio. Um, and then, um, or, or, you can take the cheap way out. Just get about 20 feet of hookup wire, connect it to the radio, throw the other end out the window, hook it to a tree, something like that. It's an untuned antenna and it will bring in all, all, all kinds of signals. If you want, you can put a very small, like a 20 picofarad capacitor, variable capacitor in series so that you can tweak that a little bit. But you can do very well with that. Now, one of the things I tried to receive with mine was an FAA system called ADS-B. And the antenna for it's only about that long, that's a quarter wave. If you make it a half wave, it's about that long. So I took a piece of LMR 400 and peeled it back so that the quarter wave was sticking out. Then I pulled the um, pulled the braid down over it so that it was the right length and put some tape around it to hold it there because it actually wanted to stretch to be longer. Um, and I've got that actually sitting right over here. Uh, and I use that when I want to hook this up to special software that will show the ADS-B readouts from the airplanes going overhead. It's pretty cool. So it's a remarkably interesting radio. So the best all-round receiving antenna is just a piece of wire thrown out the window. Um, you don't have to worry about uh, uh, SWR or anything like that. You do want to, of course, ground the radio like it's supposed to be grounded. And um, uh, just lots of things that you can do with those little radios. Uh, when I do demos with waterfalls, I almost always use my little SDR play. The software is called SDR Uno. It is free. It is the house brand software. It works. The nice thing about it is it uses all the features of the radio and uh, whereas if you get more generic software it uses some of the rest of the features so there you go there you have it uh, good luck with your little sdr play uh, receiver they're fun little things i've done videos on them in the past so you can look that up and see what i've done i have reviewed all three radios in their lineup okay uh, the SDR play, or SD, no, see, it's RSP1A, radio signal processor number 1A. Um, radio spectrum processor, excuse me, radio spectrum processor. Uh, the next one is the DX version, which has two antenna inputs you can switch between. And then the uh, Duo, which is the naming convention is a little funny. The Duo actually has three antenna inputs and you can have two entirely separate radios in there. So you can be listening to 10 megahertz here and 10 megahertz way over here. Okay, very nice little radios. If you would like to support this channel financially, you certainly can by going to decastlercom slash support. Lots of ways there to do that. Please subscribe. Please also click like. And until we next meet, 73.